Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our next edition of the Bex Generation Farmer. Uh, as we sit here today, we're at the end of April, and uh, for a lot of us, we caught maybe a little bit of rain just last night, but as we look at it, um, we're still relatively dry. And uh, a lot of corn progress. Uh, we've made a lot of great progress on corn planting. Uh, some guys are wrapping up, some guys will be wrapping up in the next multiple days, and, and we're thinking about soybean planting. And uh, there's been some soybeans in the ground, but there will be a lot more going in the next uh, few days here. So what, what I want to think about, what I want to talk about is with this cooler or this uh, drier seed beds that we need to think about our depth on our soybeans. Um, like we talked about earlier, um, that old adage of planting soybeans, uh, you know, a good, a good soybean planting uh, depth is, uh, you know, you see a few on top every now and then. Um, that is not the that is not the mindset we want to take. Um, we want to make sure we get into that consistent moisture and consistent temperature zone. And a lot of times that's inch and a half to inch and three quarters. Um, so we're really not in a lot of cases we might only be moving two clicks off of our uh, of our corn planting depth. Don't let that scare you because like we talked about, the biggest thing is is why we want to target that optimal planting depth of at least that inch and a half range. What that does is that helps with our nodule development um, later on in this plant's life, okay? And that what the nodules do is they create um, nitrogen for our soybean plant. They take a lot of nitrogen. So, um, so, so that's one reason, but the other reason we want to make sure we're planting a little bit deeper is we want to chase that moisture line a little bit. Okay, because we uh, uh, ultimately we're dry now. Um, we're gonna get rain. Um, uh, you know, I, I usually never worry about that. Uh, this is probably the driest we've been in, in the last uh, quite a few years, but um, we still got moisture there and, and we will continue to get moisture. So, so let's think about that planting depth. Um, ratchet that maybe a little bit deeper. Um, get yourself into moisture and because that's really gonna set us ourselves up for success. Because um, as we look at planting soybeans this last part of April into the first part of May, uh, we wanna capitalize on early planted soybeans. And early planted soybeans pay because of um, more sunlight capture in the vegetative, mo uh, vegetative state of that plant will ultimately create more nodes, which creates more pods. So ultimately we're gonna get more yield. Uh, but we don't wanna sacrifice that by having these soybeans laying in dry soil and we have variations in, uh, in planting population or a planting uh, emer or a, a soybean emergence. So we don't want that to happen. So let's make sure we target that, uh, that optimal uh, depth uh, to get it into moisture. The other thing that uh, I've had a fair amount of questions on as guys start thinking about, I'm gonna start to going to soybeans, we're gonna start planting soybeans and, and we're dry and boy, I just don't know if it's worth my money to, to, to spend to, to go and put that pre-emerge chemistry on. Um, so my response to that is uh, stick with the plan. Uh, when we look at our soybean acres, um, you know, it's, it's, it can be challenging to control some of our weeds, okay? And so as we look at it, that pre-emerge chemistry, that is our number one tool that we have to help us combat these tough to control weeds, okay? Because the most efficient way to kill a weed is to kill it before it comes up. So let's, let's remember and let's think about that. Yes, it, we're dry right now. Um, yes, that pre-emerge application, it costs money. But as we look at it, and I look at this long-term forecast, and we look at it, we're going to get more heat, or which usually more heat, usually it's going to end up boiling up a little bit more thunderstorm activity, and that's really what, that's really what it takes to kind of break this dry cycle. Um, so I really believe that we need to be um, continuing with our plan, put that pre-emerge chemistry out there because it is well worth the money, even in a dry situation like this, because even laying it on top, we're gonna get some activity out of it. And especially our group 14s, um, they're pretty good for the, that way. Um, they can lay there seven to 14 days and, uh, and then we can get an activating rain and we will get some reach back out of that, all right? We may not have 99% control, but even an 80% control out of a pre-emerge chemistry is way better than not having one. So let's, let's think about that and let's stick with that plan um, and, and like I said um, you know when we think about our pre-emerge chemistries on the soybeans uh, multiple mode of action is better um, so if we can get two or three uh, mode of action products uh, we're definitely going to be better off and even in these dry conditions so let's let's think about that um, the other thing I wanted to touch on quick, and, and we'll, we'll continue talking about this as, as we progress here. We don't have any corn emerging yet, um, uh, just because we've been a little on the cool side. And, uh, um, uh, but as we look at it, um, one thing we need to think about is our nutrient management programs, okay? Because since we are dry and on the drier side, um, one thing that we rely on a lot, and especially in our soils that have a fair amount of organic matter, is we rely on soil mineralization. And what that mineralization is, is that is the free nitrogen and sulfur we get out of our organic matter. 
But the key thing is, is mineralization requires um, temperature and moisture. So we're going to be getting the temperatures, we're going to start climbing up, but we are maybe not going to get as much moisture. So we might see a little bit of a lag in that mineralization. So the biggest thing that we need to start thinking about now is thinking about our manage, our nutrient program on our corn acres, all right? Maybe maybe we had an hydrous on it. Maybe we had 32 on it. Maybe we're using your, utilizing urea or manure. Um, mineralization is might be a little bit slower this year. So what we need to maybe think about is we might benefit from bringing our um, uh, cidrus app uh, applications up a little bit earlier. Okay, and, um, and and as we see that, we see some uh, uh, we see that in PFR. A lot of our PFR data shows that um, going early in that V three to V five time frame, we see a good bang for our buck in the side dress application. And when we think about um, uh, things like that, uh, UAN solution is one of your best ones. So that'd be your thirty two percent or your twenty eight percent, just because it's readily available uh, uh, quicker. It doesn't have to convert as much. A quarter of that nitrogen is already available for the plant. Um, because as we think about it, yes, that small corn plant does not take a lot of nitrogen, but that V5 time frame is a critical time frame in that plant's life where it's going to start taking up more nutrients. We're going to start determining the growth of that plant uh, of that year. And so we don't want to be short. So we might need to think about our, our nutrient plan and, and potentially going early might be a big thing. Um, so we'll touch more on that. But um, wrapping back to this chemistry thing uh, on the pre-emerge, um, stick with your plan, get that pre-emerge out there. But the other thing to think about is this proactive forward thinking is uh, a lot of times 28 to 30 days, um, that's about what we're gonna get out of our pre-emerge chemistries, all right? 28 to 30 days. So what we need to think about is if we were planting, let's say our corn, we plant some of our corn on the 20th of April. Um, by the 20th of May, we maybe we should probably be thinking about our post-emerge application pass. And it might be pretty early for some of us, but biggest thing is we don't want that to run out before. We don't want our pre-emerge chemistry to run out before we put on our post-emerge chemistry. Um, it's all about playing that residual game. So um, so think about those calendar dates spring and uh, just just plan for it. Plan for those calendar date springs and, and that's how that that's how we'll be very successful with our weed management program, especially in a dry year, because um, if these chemistries, if we are only getting maybe 80%, 85% control out of them, we're gonna wanna push that post application a little bit earlier. So uh, we'll talk more about that later, but those are a couple things I wanted to highlight today. Um, so I appreciate the time and uh, stay safe, continuing planning, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon.